little more gas. What's up fellas? Doing a video for John today who requested a custom built jet fuel burner for their chemical plant. This is a custom burner that was um, supposed to be able to put out a million BTUs. That's about 29 liters per hour. And in this test, we're going to be showing the propane assist ignition. It's pouring down rain outside right now and I really hate to wait another day to get some footage to this company. So I'm going to show them that the burner is complete. Now this blower isn't necessarily the blower that you would need to use long term, but for the budget that we had going, this is the best we can do for now. This is a cheap way to get a good blower for something like this. A blower for a burner like this can run anywhere from $500 to $2,000 very easily. This project had a very strict budget limit, so that's what we're going with here. Now, what we're about to observe here is the process of a propane assist ignition setup. Lighting jet fuel without some type of atomization is very difficult and dangerous to do. So, we are going to first light the burner using a propane lance, which is basically just a repurposed rosebud burner. And I'm going to show you guys that process in this video. It's pretty straightforward. And to do that, we're going to start off with very low air on the blower and a pretty large amount of fuel. We're going to want to have a very rich mixture to avoid any explosion. To begin, I'm going to turn this blower on very low, about the lowest setting I can get. And we're going to light this lance up. You also have to inject some flame into the chamber as well to get this to happen. It's going to blow it out. Go with a little more gas here. Okay, we are lit. See how easy that was? I held the nozzle very close to the tip. I'm now going to increase the fuel output substantially and we're going to turn the air up. I'm now going to add more fuel. Add more air. We always add fuel first in the step up to avoid a lean mixture which will induce a flame out which can be very dangerous.
Okay. What that does is gives us that very hot rail bar in there. And that red hot bar is going to emanate a significant amount of radiation that will help vaporize the incoming fuel. And it's probably going to get the whole chamber hot when we start adding diesel to that. I was limited by a, the fuel flow on this setup. Pretty hot situation there. So that was the purpose of running that rail all the way through. That's also going to draw that fireball back to the back of the burner so that we don't have an extremely cold spot in the beginning. So what we would do is get this thing ran up to about half power. We would then introduce fuel, the diesel, and then completely take away the propane lance. And we would be closing that vent up. If you have a pair of gloves on, you can screw that thing on there no, no problem, even with a little bit of flame coming out. I've done it many times on similar burners. I get really nervous when I build stuff like this. When I go to light it up, I don't always know if it's gonna work and when it doesn't, you've really walked yourself down into a hole. But you may not be able to dig yourself out of without losing a lot of money. So I would say I got lucky with this one. It, the flame tube did what I wanted it to. I've made a lot of these cyclone burners in the past and the heat wanting to stay towards the front is a problem for the vaporization of the fuel. We can't have a fuel pump on this thing. Not enough money in the budget. We can't have an atomizer. Not enough money. So I was kind of stuck with a situation where I'm going to have a hot end on the burner and a cold back. And I, I need the whole thing to get hot. I want that fuel to vaporize as soon as it splashes in there. So I've never done the flame tube that long before. I've thought about it in many times. And I've even done some designs that induce the flame to come towards the back. If we put a hole in the back of that burner, it will bring the flame to the back like that. I've got some old waste oil burner videos that um, I could probably show, show you what I'm talking about. You can cause that combustion zone to migrate to different regions of that chamber simply by altering the geometry and uh, I don't want fire shooting out the back though. I've got one design where the fire shoots out the back, goes into the pipe and shoots out the front. You guys may have seen that five barrel burner I built before. If you go to my YouTube and look up uh, waste oil burner lights in blizzard, you'll see what I'm talking about. I, I, to get that flame to migrate towards the back of the burner to avoid the cold section, we put a hole in the back of the burner and piped four exhaust pipes off of that discharge shooting out the front and it works great but that wasn't an option here there's not enough time and money this had to be a quick shot deal it's kind of late and i didn't want to go to bed worrying about this freaking thing so i got lucky there the flame tube was a hit i think it's going to work well so that's where we're at right now john if the weather clears up tomorrow and it's not pouring down rain i'm going to do another video of the actual jet fuel combustion. Now I'm expecting it to run at lower temperatures on that fuel. Propane's an extremely hot burn. And as far as, you know, the lifespan of that inner tube, obviously if we had more money, we could use something like a monometal or I think it's a Linko 660. I'll have to check into that figure, but an Linko tube would do far better than a stainless steel tube. Even if the tube does burn out, that type of burner will burn just fine with just an open end like that. I've got some footage that I can send you a video of, of a smaller one of these things running on that type of fuel. So it's not detrimental to the operation of the burner. I was just hoping to get, you know, a red hot 
element in there to help vaporize that liquid fuel a little bit more effectively. Because we don't have an atomization nozzle in there, it's a challenge to get the fuel to vaporize properly and with a stable burn without any buffeting. So this is what we got for the budget that me and you discussed. And you know, with more money, we could do a lot more obviously, but I think for this price, you guys are gonna be very pleased with the equipment. And I'll get you another video as soon as possible. Hopefully tomorrow in mid afternoon, I'll be able to get that mixture of the NAFTA. Man, I can't say that right. We'll get the mixture in there and I'll show you guys the procedure of converting from propane over to the liquid fuel. Using this propane lance as the ignition source is definitely a cheap way to go. We're looking at 28 bucks versus any other type of system would be a huge pain and it costs a lot of money. Without having atomized liquid fuel, it is very hard to get it to light and it can be dangerous. You could get a levee explosion, stuff like that. So this is gonna be the way to go for sure. And uh, I'll have some more footage coming soon. The exterior of this combustion chamber didn't get very hot on the propane. We can tell by that straw color, we did not exceed 500 degrees Fahrenheit on the exterior of this. A yellow color on stainless typically indicates 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we didn't run it for very long, so you know there's that. But I'm expecting the liquid fuel to fill that chamber far better. We were limited on the fuel input to about 90 kilowatts, as I said, with one of these tanks. Um, if you run liquid propane, you can get a lot more than that. You can get 850 kilowatts pretty easily. Actually, I think you can get more than that. I think I've got um, one or two megawatts out of one of those bottles on liquid, but that's neither here nor there. That's pretty much where we're at on this. If we were to make this tube out of a Linko 600, of, of one of the 600 series, we would be uh, far better off. This is just 304 stainless steel for now. Also making it out of a thicker metal would um, increase the lifespan of that inner tube. Even when it does burn out, just having this hole at the end is extremely effective as a combustion chamber. But that's where we are. Tomorrow we'll be seeing this thing running on actual diesel. And I'm expecting to have a very large flame, about three foot coming out the front. We also have the option of putting a flat baffle, sliding it down inside of that tube, which stops that vortex on the inside. That inner vortex inside that flame tube reduces the discharge of the burner quite a bit. If we were to slide something in there, it would probably you know, kick out a three, four foot flame. But one of the advantages of that is the center of that vortex is low pressure and it can actually pull air into it. But we are gonna want some secondary air for this thing to run without smoke. In practice, let's say we got a flame sticking out here this far, no oxygen is gonna be available in a confined space for this flame in this area to burn complete. The blower itself is only gonna be providing enough oxygen in most cases for the internal combustion. So we are gonna to wanna to allow some secondary air to leak through I don't know if you guys have a negative pressure ID hooked up, ID fans, um, but we'll have to talk about that. The thrust from the burner itself will, in most cases, induce some draft, and um, we could just have a couple of holes or some type of valve vent that allows that, but we are going to want some secondary air to come past and into this combustion zone to allow the exterior flame to fully combust. Otherwise, it'll smoke a little bit on you, and we don't want that. So that's just another thing. And I am gonna provide another piece of metal for this gap in my ring here. An additional section will connect onto this to close that gap up. That's just um, kind of what I came up with there. This circle was cut directly at 10 inches using a slip roller doesn't always give you a perfect circle at the seam and that little bit of a bump there in the bottom pushed out my ring there a little bit so we'll have an insert piece that just slides over that to cover that up it'll actually go on the other side here 
But for the most part, we're gonna want that front casing to leak a little bit of air anyway. As I said, because we need secondary air. So we'll be seeing more of this real quick.